Good morning. We're on the uh, laws of Rechilas, laws of evil speech, chap- and we're starting chapter 5. And now we're going to be talking about listening to Rechilas. So Rechilas, again, is somebody goes and tells somebody what someone was saying about him. So you go and tell Ruvain, hey, did you hear what Shimon said about you? That's Rechilas gossiping tale bearing, which is uh, what we're studying now. So let's say somebody comes to you and says, you know, uh, Ruvain said this about you. He said, uh, he said you're a thief, or he said whatever it is. He said you're not a nice guy. So that's Rechilas. Now we're going to learn the pro- in addition to there being a prohibition to speaking Rechilas, there is also a prohibition to listening and to believing Rechilas, what was said about to believe what was said about you, and to listen to what was said about you. So let's get started. Aleph. Just like there's a prohibition to accept Lashon Hara there's uh, on a Torah level, there's also a prohibition to accept Rechilas on a Torah level. It's also considered Lashon Hara. And you're not allowed to believe that what someone tells you, someone said about you, is true. So if someone comes and tells you, "Hey, uh, Steve said, you know that that you're you're a thief," and I, I didn't think it was nice what Steve said about you, you're not allowed to believe that Steve actually said it, that about you. You can't believe it in your heart. Just like Lashon Hara, if someone says to you, you know, uh, so and so is a crook, you're not allowed to believe it in your heart. Um, so to hear by Rachilas. If someone says, Steve said that you're a crook, or Steve said that you're not a nice guy, you're not allowed to believe that Steve actually said it. One violates the Torah prohibition of Losisa. Besides for that negative prohibition, as we mentioned in the, as Chavetz Chaim mentioned in the introduction to the laws of Lashon Hara, there are many other prohibitions that are associated with that. So one who believes Rechilus, it violates many prohibitions. The Amr Chazal, the rabbis say, Gimel Lashon Hara Har Gosom. Lashon Hara Har Gosom. Three people, Lashon Hara kills three people. Ha'omro, the one who says the Lashon Hara. Bahamakablo, the one who listens to the Lashon Hara. Umishin Emeralav, and the one who the Lashon Hara was spoken about. So the three people, the rabbis say, get killed for speaking Lashon Hara. And he's going to bring an example. Kemoshi Adua Me'inyin Doeg. Like the case of Doeg. What was the case of Doeg? Uh, King Shaul was trying to kill King David, and he took refuge in Nov, the city of Kohanim. And Doeg told Shaul that the city of Kohanim have given, had given David King David refuge. And King David went and killed... Um, sorry, King Shaul went and killed the city. Killed, wiped out the city. So what happened also... Doeg, who said this Lashon Hara, he wasn't allowed in the next world from Olam Haba. Because of this Rechilas that he spoke. Nov, And Nov, the whole city, like we said, was wiped out. That the Rechilas was said about them. And Shaul, at the end of his life, was killed um, for speaking the Rechilas. Or his, it led to his death. So the one who spoke, Doeg, suffered because of it, the one who listened to it, King Shaul, suffered because of it, and the one who was spoken about suffered because of it. So from that, the rabbis say that three people um, Lashon Hara kills. When it says the one who listens to the Lashon Hara more so gets punished than the one who says it, or more so gets killed because the one uh, than the one who said it. Chazal, Chazal also said, Whoever speaks Lashon Hara and whoever listens to Lashon Hara, it is, fit, it is fitting that he be thrown to the dogs. We know in the Torah, whenever there is a juxtaposition of Pesukim, when two verses are close to each other, at certain times, um, the, it's meant to teach us something. So here, the prohibition of listening to Lashon Hara is written right next to the verse that one should not eat non-kosher meat, but rather throw it to the dogs. So in addition to teaching the law of non-kosher meat, it's meant to teach us that one who speaks Lashon Hara and one who listens to Lashon Hara, it is fitting that he be thrown to the dogs. So we see how serious Hashem 
treats speaking Lashon Hara and how it is something that we have to stay away from. Okay, Halacha Beis. Number two. Also, even just listening to Rechilas is prohibited. Meaning, not just believing it, but even listening it. Let, let's say you want to listen to Rechilas and you say, I'm just going to listen to it, but I'm not actually going to believe it. So that is also a prohibition. Just like we learned about Lashon Hara in chapter one, in the, sorry, section one, chapter six, number two. Even if, when you're listening to it, you don't know if you're going to believe it or not, it's still prohibited. Now there's one exception, though, he's saying, when it's okay to listen to Rechilas. What is that? If you understand from, let's say somebody comes to you and he says, Hey, um, I want to tell you something about Ruvain, what Ruvain said about you. Now, if you understand from the way he's saying it, or he gives you an indication that he wants to warn you about something that's going to happen to you in the future, or he wants to warn you that someone wants to hurt you in the future, in that case, you are allowed to listen to what he has to tell you in order to protect yourself, like we learned by Lashon Hara. However, you're not allowed to believe it in your heart. You're only allowed to listen to it to be choshesh, meaning if someone comes and tells you, hey, I want to... I want to let you know that Ruvain is planning to, uh, you know, you know, mug. He's he's. You should really know he's he's a mugger, and on your way home from shul, he's planning on mugging you and, and stealing your wallet. So you're definitely allowed to protect yourself, and you're allowed to, uh, you know, go home a different way from shul so that you don't get mugged. But you're not allowed to believe it in your heart that he's actually a mugger. So the case where you're allowed to listen to the rechilas or listen to the lashon hara is when you perceive from what the person is telling you that it's relevant. To protect yourself in the future. Okay, let's do halacha gimel. Now, if you see in your friend a recognizable thing, meaning you see certain things, your, your person is acting in a certain way that gives you an indication that he wants to harm you. Whether it's monetarily, he maybe wants to cheat you or he wants to beat you up. Even if you never heard any rumors about this before from anybody, so in that case, you're allowed to ask people, you know, does so and so want to hurt me? Or so you know how to protect yourself. So you know you can say like, uh, hey, do you know uh, does Ruvain is he planning on doing something to me? You're allowed to ask him that in order to protect yourself. Now, the Chavetz Chaim said earlier. In Chelak Aleph, chapter four, number eleven, that in that case you have to tell the people while you're at why you are asking. The Chavetz Chaim doesn't mention it here, so I'm not really sure. I don't really think it's um, he's indicating that you don't have to say it here. Maybe he's just relying on what he wrote earlier. But earlier he said that when you ask somebody, you have to tell them why you're asking because even though your intent is proper, that you're asking, hey, you know. Um, do you know anything about Reuven wanting to harm me and you only want to know to protect yourself where you're allowed to, it could be that the person you're asking, he just hates Reuven and he's not doing it for pure motives, so he'll violate a prohibition. So you have to tell him, the reason I'm asking you is because I want to protect myself and it's relevant for the future so that the person telling you doesn't violate any prohibitions. So just to quickly summarize the laws that we said, it is forbidden to believe Rechilas, it is forbidden to listen to Rechilas, however, if you understand from the beginning of the conversation that someone wants to warn you about something that's going to happen in the future, then you are allowed to listen to the Rechilas to protect yourself, but you are not allowed to believe it in your heart. And if you suspect, if you have evidence or indicators that someone wants to harm you, you are allowed to go and investigate and ask people about it in order that you can protect yourself. And you really should tell them the reason that you're asking so they don't violate any prohibitions. And if you have any questions, comments or concerns, please feel free to uh, send me a message and hope everyone has a beautiful day.